Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. Today I am doing my bullet journal review part two of my series and it is the 100 GSM Artist Life bullet journal. I purchased it at Michael's for about $15 Canadian and we're going to take a look and see how this does. Just as a reminder, I have a variety of pens that I'll be testing as well as um, pencil crayon, watercolor pencils, watercolor paint, and then dye ink, pigment ink, and solvent ink as well. So um, I'll mark the times down below so that you can skip ahead to what matters to you. <laughs> but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll link my part one, the first of my series, up in the cards. It's the Studio Dollar Store Bullet Journal, and you can check that out. And um, I hope you stay tuned. Next week, I'll be reviewing a new one, but for now, let's get started. Taking a closer look at the Artist Life Bullet Journal, um, this is 100 GSM, 192 pages. The measurements are 6 inches by 8 inches. Um, 192 pages, I said. It says it's improved paper, but we'll test that. It lays flat. It includes a blank table of contents, page markers, and an elastic closure band. I really do like the elastic closure band, so big fan of that. Um, I was, I'm going to preface this with as a little bit disappointed in the journal and you're going to see why. So there's your blank table of contents. There are a fair number of pages, if you like that. There is no pocket in the back, if that matters, and no canvas page. Now these dots are 29 across and 35 down. They are 0.375 spaces apart, the dots themselves. But my issue lies in the margins. So what they've done is they've taken this bullet journal and the squares, there are no margins in the center. So some pages run completely through the margins like this one or this one where that dot is right in the middle of the margin. There's no page margins on the side. And then there is a huge discrepancy between the top margin and the bottom. So if that's something that bothers you, you're definitely gonna wanna take note of that. But the dots do line up pretty great across the board that way. So um, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test these, pen test these. So this is my attempt at measuring how many squares they were and I accidentally started one over because I'm used to having a margin and I realized it doesn't so that's why it says 28 instead of 29 but there's definitely 29. So let's get started with our panels. We're going to start off with our paper made flare and again I'll be doing to one where I'll be testing for smudging and one just for overall aesthetic, I guess. Um, no bleeding, no ghosting, and no ridging. Now we have the Sharpie S gel pen. A little bit of smudging, a little bit of bleed through, and a little bit of ghosting and ridging. This one hits all the marks. Okay, now I have my Tombow size 3 drawing pen. No smudging, no ghosting, no bleeding, no ridging. We have the micron. A little bit of smudging, nothing major. No bleeding, no ghosting, no ridging. We have the prism color. No smudging. No bleeding, no ghosting, no ridging. Okay, we just have a generic big ballpoint pen. 
you no know, smudging, no ghosting, no bleeding, um, some ridging. Now we have a fountain pen. This is just a Uli from um, Target. Lots of smudging. No ghosting, no bleeding, no ridging. Here we can do a jelly roll next. Lots of smudging. No bleeding, no ghosting, or a little bit of ghosting and bridging. Okay, we're going to do the Intel Touch. No smudging, ghosting definitely, and it looks like there's bleeding, but I think it's mostly just ghosting, heavy ghosting. Now we have the Tombow Video Suitcase. No smudging, ghosting definitely, um, no bleeding. And then we have a mild liner, no smudging. There is definitely through and there is some ghosting there as well. So the mild liners are such a We have a Crayola super tip. A little bit of smudging. Ghosting, definitely. Um, no bleachers. I grabbed a friction line liner. There is some smudging. The erase is just fine. And there is a little bit of ghosting, but Nothing not as bad as the other guys above it. Let's do a Sharpie. No smudging. There is bleed through and there is ghosting. I have a Tombow brush marker. There's lots of smudging. No bleed through, no ghosting, but there is a little bit of walking, which is interesting. And then just for fun, we have a Artrin Olive Acrylograph. If you're not familiar with the acrylographs, they are pink pens. Well, they're magic pink pens. <laughs> just not in these books. So lots of smudging. No ghosting. Or at least where I smudged it, there's a little bit of ghosting. And there's no bleed through, which is really cool. And being a paint pen, it's not surprising that it's not that much. So now we're going to move on to our pencil colors and our watercolors, and then we'll do our stamping. So again, we have our Prisma colored pencils. We have our dough and watercolor pencils and the Humor Marketing watercolors. And I'm using a water brush pen to do the water painting with. Okay, so starting with our Prisma color. goes on nice and smooth and even. It does smudge, so you will have to spray something to keep the color contained from smudging. And now we'll do our watercolor pencil. Some bleed through. The bleed through is coming as it dries. You're gonna see more bleed through, um, but there is ghosting and the page is warping. Again, it doesn't say that it can handle watercolor, but I just thought we'd throw it in there and try. So now we're going to move on to our stamping and see how our stamps hold up. So again, we have a fade resistant dye ink, a pigment ink, and a solvent ink. Um, majority of the time, the pig pigment ink is the best one to use in the planner as it's less likely to bleed through. Um, and the dye ink, which is more water-based, is more inclined to bleed through. And the solvent ink pretty much goes on anything. So just like the alcohol marker, um, this is pretty tough stuff. So it's most likely to bleed through. Now we have um, an alphabet number and symbol stamp set that we're going to play with and try. Last time I used A and we're just going to use B for fun this time. So we'll start off with the dye ink. No smudging. 
Okay, then we have our Studio G pigmenting. And just so you know, I am cleaning the stamp off in between, so we're not getting ink transfer anywhere. So what you're seeing is the actual ink that's reacting. I like this my thing. Right now. So I'm ghosting by the dye ink, and then there's actually a lot of bleed through from the pigment ink. Um, since it, there was a lot of ink that came on. And now we're going to try the stays ink, stays on. A little bit of smudging, but if you let it sit and dry for a tiny bit longer, it, you're not going to have smudging. And then there you see some ghosting. Not as much as the dye ink or the pigment ink, but there is some ghosting and no bleed through. I feel like I'm getting my butt kicked on this whole stamping thing, but that's okay. Not all pigment inks are created equal, but this one is very saturated. So anyways, there is transfer onto the other pages from the acrylic graph, I believe. Nope, that's from the pigment ink and from the jelly roll. Um, so just keep that in mind. Those guys will need longer to dry. But overall, um, it held up pretty well to the paint test. The most impressive part for me right now is definitely the watercolour. Um, it didn't bleed through, but I also didn't use that much water. And it's pretty dry now. It does feel a bit crusty. Um, that's what watercolour paint does. But, but yeah, it held up pretty well. And this is a very cost-effective bullet journal and again easy to find if you live near a Michaels in North America. <laughs> um, but my biggest disappointment is the margins for sure. Like um, here the dots have run into each other. So but other than the margins, um, this is actually I would consider using this. So I hope you enjoyed today's review. And uh, you tune in for the next Bullet Journal review. Thank you for watching today.